So as you see, I've done a, a lot of work. I took a little break because otherwise this video is going to be extremely long. But I just did the same thing that I did here. I did in each section, of course, you know, the, the uh, shading, the value change, the dark is just on the left side, right after the curvature of the segment. And then on this side, it's on the right, right after the curvature. Um, I'm gonna quickly stem. Um, I'm going to use the brown. I'll use the yellow okra, um, white. The lightest part will be the, probably somewhere in here. I'm gonna just go ahead and, and and you can see my white's got stuff all over it. I could take a tissue and wipe it. Um, but again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm gonna put some white in, some white in on the top part there. <clears throat> I'm gonna put those lines are representing some kind of part of the, the vine, the indentation, kind of like the pumpkin. So there's some dark parts there. And I know since it bends this way, the shadow will be underneath here as well. Even with lights coming like this, so it's gonna be, I'm gonna lightly put in some brown, lightly. I'm not pushing hard. You can see these lines are harder. Just along the bottom side there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this yellow ochre and push down. And I'm not totally in love with uh, the way this stem looks as far as color choice wise. You know, limited palette. We have to work with what we have. So now I'm gonna take some white and circular motion. I'm doing my blending now with it. You could see that this part here feels more complete than that and that, the scribble part, right? So now I'm gonna go in, over in here, take the white and blend in. Now I don't wanna, I could see right now it's getting a little washed out, meaning it's too white. So I gotta be careful of that. So it might need some more of this yellow ochre and I'm putting some more brown in. Putting some brown down down further. And it's blending in with the white. hard to brush off without making a big mess. I'm almost okay with this right here. There. Um, the back parts here. Little yellow on the top parts because those are the higher I put in a little bit of blue just right down the bottom on the back side, just to help show it curving down. And then I use that orange to blend it in and the yellow to also blend that in. Okay, now the only thing I'm missing here is a horizon line. Look here, you guys. See the horizon line? It gives us ground, our foreground. This is our pumpkin middle ground, and then this is our background. Okay, so we want a horizon line that somehow divides that up. So I'm gonna put one in right about here, and that means whatever I choose for the color, I need to darken this area here because I'm gonna make a casted shadow. So um, the casted shadow, I, here's my horizon line, and I'm not gonna go and fill this all up with pastel because this is an exercise, a demonstration. It's not meant for a final piece. Um, in, on our smaller ones, we'll do the, the uh, foreground and, and the background with color. So just to demonstrate, you can see I drew kind of a rough, rounded, shallow, small casted shadow because our light is here. So we're gonna, you know, our pumpkin still turns this way, curves as well as this way. So I'm just gonna put in a little color down there. And to be consistent with color, our color theory, I'm gonna go ahead and block in some blue. And I'm gonna be using the uh, blue and brown, I want to see what the brown does. I don't want to go straight to black as 
And remember, I talked about mistakes, so I'm not worried about that, right? I'm going to use this blue now to really define the edge of that pumpkin. So if I had a rough bottom and I didn't like it, I'm going to use push in that blue a little bit just to define that space a little more. You can see by doing that, this makes the pumpkin stand out. Like watch this area over here. So I go in there. Now it's going to stand out a lot better. So I'm going to push this around, get some blue in there. And then I'm going to see what my brown does. I might not like it, but that's me. I'm willing to try. So the circular motion, because I don't want to get to see what's happening. Here's why I don't like it. I don't like it because it's also warm. So it's warming up the brown, I mean the blue, and so it doesn't stand out enough. So I want to discard that. I'm going to go back over with the blue. Now, maybe I'll take a little black into it. I'm going to use the black really light, though, because black pastel is very dominant. You barely want to use any of that. I'm going to see if I can somehow um, blend this out and see what happens. I'm going to try my finger first. And I'm just kind of pulling at it, pushing this out. and messing around with that. What do you guys see back on through this? So obviously I need a little more blue in here. Pull some of that out. Just pushing, pulling towards me a little bit. And I might be all right with this. Now, notice my edge right now. I'm using the black, but I'm using a little loose, that texture, I mean, that kind of unfinished look. Parts of that is still showing on the pumpkin, so it matches that a little bit. Again, I'm going to use my finger just to smooth some of that. Don't worry about all of it. There we go. All right. Please have fun doing this. Um, give yourself room to make mistakes. Um, remember that you are putting down the uh, shading, the what color you're going to use for a shading, whatever that color may be. You're going to put that down in those areas first, lightly. And then you're going to build your colors on top of each other. Don't forget about using your lighter colors and some white for highlight areas. Um, and using the pastel on top of pastel to help blend. Circular motions, don't put strong vertical or horizontal lines in. Uh, that will flatten out your object. Good luck, you guys. Have fun. Take care.